Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the Monday, November 3rd, 2014 edition of Intelligence Report with Shrink from N.com and a voice from N.com. Uh, with you, as always, I am Dean Esme, creepy basement dwelling, neck bearded, misogynist, thug, and uh, cuddly kitten. Um, with me is Paul Elam, the notorious. Um, uh, uh, well, lots of bad things. Uh, Paul Elam, publisher of A Voice for Men. Say hi, Paul. Hello, everybody. And, of course, as usual, the lovely and the uh, amazing Dr. Tara Paul Mottier. Say hi, Dr. T. Hello, everybody. I'd like to remind everybody again, if you like what we're doing here, please do hit the like button and the subscribe button. It makes a positive difference to what we're doing. So today we're going to be speaking uh, pretty much exclusively about the rather astounding and very successful Men in Crisis Conference at Kennesaw State University, which took place on Saturday, the November 1st. Uh, Paul and I were in attendance, as were uh, roughly 80 to 100 people. I don't know what the final count was. Uh, we had a terrific lineup of speakers, including Jonathan Taylor of A Voice for Male Students, Professor Janice Fiamengo of... Um, the Ottawa University of Ottawa, yeah, University yep. of Ottawa. Um, uh, some guy named Paul, big hairy monkey-looking guy. I don't know. He didn't have anything good to say. That was me. Oh, right, that was you. Sorry, it was brilliant. Um, Sage Gerard, aka Victor Zen, and I'm missing somebody. I think you are missing Karen Strong. Um, oh, Karen which, Strong. I'm sure right. she will be very offended at. Girl writes what? Well, nobody likes her anyway, so yeah. that's absolutely fine. She's I know I don't. She's stinky and short-haired, so what's the like? Uh, no, Karen actually gave a great speech, too. Uh, all the speeches were interesting. We had people. We got to meet a number of people we've never met before, and Kennesaw State University men seems to have pulled off what nobody has accomplished in quite some time. I remember a couple of years ago there was an attempt to not just start a men's group but have a small conference like this that was pretty much shut down up in Montana. Give me your impressions of the events, Mr. Elam, since you were one of the, the guys that was speaking there. Well, first I want to say that uh, the fact that uh, I would say nanny nanny boo boo to cafe because we can have a conference at a college without a fire alarm going off. No, just kidding. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> these, no, I'm, I'm no, kidding. Have, I'm kidding. Kidding. They all need to be firebombed. <laughs> uh, all respects to CAFE who have done just amazing work, and because of their work, uh, the CAFE has uh, launched a brick-and-mortar structure, a center for men and families. Uh, they're doing amazing stuff up there. The Fire alarm remark is more about the feminist population than it is about CAFE for sure. CAFE's doing the right thing. Feminists up there are just fucking out of control. Um, and we did have our moments uh, at this conference. Um, I guess I want to start off with some of the funny stuff, um, which you've already probably, there's been a lot of people already see it online. Um, very interesting development during the Q&A after my talk. Uh, I was had a, a feminist blow up on me. Um, of course, we weren't all doing anything. We were just bashing feminists, and uh, God, we'd never heard that one before. And it turns out that the feminist attacking the conference and what we were doing there was the mother of the conference organizer. So you can imagine that was a little bit awkward uh, for for me uh, to be up there. Sage does work for AVFM. He's organized the conference, and Mommy is throwing a piss fit. Um, and I mean, complete with like hands up in there and stuff like that uh, as she's talking. Now, initially, my reaction, other than what the fuck, uh, was a, a little bit like, "Hey, this seems to be crossing a line." Uh, to me that 
I wouldn't cross as somebody's parent. I wouldn't like go to their college and to their conference and start dumping on their speakers. Uh, but that's just me. I'm funny uh, uh, that way. But uh, honestly, as Steve Brule was there, was hi Steve. It was great to see you again. And he was doing a lot of videography there of the event, and he spoke to me on camera just a few minutes after that. I also need to point out that. Um, um, Sage is from a very outspoken family. He's an outspoken person. His mother's an outspoken person. And uh, the fact that this went down at our conference and uh, nobody was shouted down, nobody was drug out in handcuffs, no, uh, nobody was spit on or called a fucking rape apologist or, or anything shows that we do invite dissent. Uh, it is uh, certainly welcome at our conferences. Anybody wants to stand up and and take a stand. The only thing I'm, and I'm going to say this now, because again, at the live event, I I felt very awkward, really coming back too hardly on Sage's mom, and I mean it was just a very awkward position to be in. Uh, but one of the things I, I, I saw want to that, and actually I think you handled it with great aplomb. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, one of the things that she said that I am going to take a serious contention with now, though is taking credit for what Sage did because she raised him. This well, sort of, uh, actually, I, I, I disagree with you there because I know for a fact there are many passionate MRAs who were raised by feminist mommies. Well, I, I, I really wanted to say during that time when she but said I, don't, I, don't think I, she, I raised him, yeah. I wanted to say, well, let me get this right. You're the feminist that raised the anti-feminist. <laughs> put on this conference, okay, I guess thanks are in order. Um, Thank you for being a hateful gender ideologue because Sage, okay. is, Sage is great. Yes, he is, and he handled himself amazingly. I, I got to say, fabulous. and not just in that moment. I, I got to take a moment to take my hand off to Sage in his organizational ability, the fact that he had meals brought in for everybody, the, the, that we stayed pretty damn much on schedule. The only problems were that, uh, that that I spoke a little shorter than I was supposed to. Nothing created by Sage, but he executed this. Uh, at 23 years old, managing an event like this just amazed me, and uh, he'll never get enough credit for that, uh, but it was a really good event. The, the talks there, I think, were solid. I loved what Jonathan Taylor had to say. I'm not going to talk about them too much because there are videos coming out, and I'm sure a lot of people will be watching them. The other event that happened there, other than the Jerry Springer moment, was the they we actually got, and it was just fascinating watching this, an organization, a feminist group called Yes Body was in attendance there. And they had had a protest all week. They had been hanging out panties and putting out a beat-up old mattress. I guess it was like protest art, statement art, something like that. Um, what it had to do with the men's conference, I have no idea. Uh, because you know, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't want their panties. And I, well, I don't well, think after all this time, are you still expecting feminists to make sense? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> true. What's wrong with you? Uh, yeah, God, put me back in my place, Dr. T. I, I think I was. I was like, okay, so you strung out a bunch of panties to protest a men's conference. Okay, I guess, uh, whatever, uh, uh, apparently because, you know, we're rapists. Uh, but what was fascinating there was the subject came up uh, many times uh, about the absolutely contemptuous smear campaign launched by Kennesaw State University faculty against Sage Girard, trying to paint him as a danger to women, uh, filing police reports where they say, I f and I read the, read the reports, folks, this is not bullshit, and we will be posting them in the near future, where they say, I feel that he may be a threat. I feel that he has homicidal ideations against women. I feel this, and I feel that. Not one fucking shred of evidence. And what they're trying to do is the same thing that this, this ignorant dick that he, he um, had the debate with, I forget, Brian Klein, um, they're trying to demonize him and paint him as a threat to the women on that campus, which is dangerous to him. Because it's very much, 
very much in the line of Joe Filippo of Cosmo, who actually had the gall to say in public when writing about our WhiteRibbon.org campaign that we were the men who fantasize about slitting women's throats. Hey, good job there, Joe Filippovic, you slanderous, libelous, irresponsible excuse for a subhuman <laughs> journalist. But anyway, I, go ahead. I have a very rich fantasy life, but believe it or not, that is not amongst my fantasies. Um, I, I, would, I would say that, you know, this. I feel he's a threat. I feel like he might be having right fantasies calls to mind um, certain pathologies in which, in which individuals confuse their feelings with facts. Are you talking about cluster B's again, Dr. T? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> um, but, but also, you know, and how many, how many a false DV charge has occurred because a woman feels afraid that her husband might hit her, even though he's never had a history of violence, never touched her. And this is something that really gets my goat, which is law enforcement making arrests, criminal trials being run based on a woman's feelings instead of fact-based evidence. Like, if I were a cop and a woman said, I feel like this man might be a threat, I would ask, do you have any evidence of that? Has he sent you hostile emails? Has he left hate notes in your mailbox? Has he done damage to your property? No. Well, sorry, maybe you should go talk to a therapist about your feelings instead of the effing police. No, I, I find interesting Two, um, well, a couple of things. I know what that protest from the Yes Body Group was, um, which they're tr they were trying to symbol symbolize the reality of rape and rape culture, and using the pseudo numbers come up with by the likes of Mary Koss and stuff, were showing panties to represent every female victim and men's underwear to show every male victim, and of course there was very little male underwear there. That's what they were about, but. Um, Paul had what been doing. The, what was the mattress about, Dean? What's what's up with the fucking this mattress? Was, <laughs> the symbolize, you know, there's this poor woman. She was taken roughly in bed by this man, or the sliver one in seventy-one men who have that. That's that's what it was all about. I, I mean, I do think it was not particularly effective as a protest, but you know, you're in college, you're trying to be creative. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. Well, well it could be like a constructed, reconstructed the inside of a van or the back seat of a car or something like that. I mean, wouldn't that show a little bit more artistic prowess? In any case, we're making fun of them, but we're pretty sure that they were fed misinformation from an outside group because, well, I know that in your talk that you pretty much eviscerated the entire concept of feminist rape culture in which supposedly men are normalized to rape women, which is a hateful, bigoted lie. But, you know, sometimes I, I, it's hard for me to, to blame the average 20-year-old college student from believing this shit when she's told that it's true. Um, since Sage's mom had uh, had an experience of being raped, um, I, I think maybe that may have been what set her off. But, you know, being confronted with the fact that you've been lied to about the prevalence of this thing is something that more feminists and really more people should get used to. But well, then let me ask you the other part, Dean, of what I, what I, I did take exception to. And, and this is not surprising to me. I'm not targeting Sage's mom because of this. But what a lot of times these people don't get is that men's issues is not about your personal fucking life experience. This isn't about you. It, it, it is about another set of issues, has nothing to do with your personal life, and to stand up and say, I couldn't report a rape um, in my personal life years ago, one, honestly not true. They've been putting men in prison for rape uh, long, long They've been lynching time. men for rape. Forget or prison. Or for alleged rape. And or they for have, alleged rape. They used to have the death penalty for rape in this country. You can't tell me. Uh, yes, it's embarrassing. Yes, it is a difficult process to go through. Nobody's denying that. But don't tell me you cannot report a rape that is bullshit. Um, and this is, again, it all came back to her. It all came back to her. And that bugs me. Um, and that's always bugged me. But again, I think Sage handled it well. But what came out of this yes body thing was that one of these co-presidents of Yes Body came up to the microphone and actually apologized to Sage for his demonization at the school. Now, on one level, we have to take this with a grain of salt because it was not actually her 
that did the demonizing, and we need to point that out. This was uh, the the only people standing up apologizing were people that weren't guilty of anything except maybe having some what I think are misguided ideas. Uh, but they hadn't demonized. The people that did the dirty deeds are still undercover, uh, still being hidden by police and by the university administration when they should be being called to task and they should be fired. Uh, any member of faculty that goes after the character and because you never know. There's always, despite feminist claims that women are the ones at risk, you can count on the fact that there's almost always going to be some baboon in the crowd that's going to have a savior complex and is going to decide to save the world or, or and to save women from Sage Gerard by doing something to him. This is dangerous business they're engaging in. It is threatening and it is dangerous and the university is still sitting with their thumbs up their asses and we're getting apologies from kids that didn't do anything wrong because they're embarrassed by it. This school administration should be thoroughly and completely embarrassed by what's been going on and what we have on camera. Well, I don't know that. What What are you referring to about what we have on camera? Say the 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 one confrontational moment wasn't anything to do with the. Uh, well, the fact that, that, that there are university feminist students who didn't do anything to Sage Gerard, who did not make false police reports on him, uh, feeling embarrassed enough to stand up and apologize on camera for what was done to him by faculty members should be an embarrassment to the university, as far as I'm concerned. Right. You've got a student apologizing for their own teachers. That yeah. should say something. You've got feminist students apologizing for their own teachers. That should say something. In fact, I will make a joke that I've made several times. The, 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 I'll go ahead and make it again. Um, uh, the, the stereotype of Canadians is that they're very polite people. And the stereotype of Americans is that we're not so polite. And uh, this time, I guess we flipped the script because Apparently, at least in Georgia, feminists are a lot friendlier and more polite than they are in fucking Canada, but because holy shit, I mean, uh, we had one intemperate outburst that quickly turned into a civil discussion. Up in Canada, and I noticed this when I was there, we were showing, and in Georgia there, we were showing pictures of the violent and hateful and disgusting protests that the Canadian Association for Equality had experienced, and some of the feminists present were tittering and laughing like they must be making this up. No, girls, I'm afraid your sisters up in Canada are incredibly virulent and vitriolic. But anyway, Either that or, or because they think that sort of shit is funny. Yeah, well, one of the two. But in this case, at least the feminists were polite enough. The American feminists, at least, informed us that they were coming and actually sat and listened. So uh, instead of pulling fire alarms and calling people names, so this time the Americans are more polite than Canada. Take that, cafe. No, again, just teasing. Um, so go and ahead. Again, I was going to say on behalf, uh, again, in all fairness, while we will never see eye to eye uh, with the young women of Yes Body, uh, Sage did introduce them to me. They were both very polite. Uh, they were both engaged in the conversation and they both agreed whether or not this will materialize is another story that they will assist Kaysom in the future and if that does materialize then I think that's a great thing uh, but still the gist of this as I examined the one I'll call it the feminist table that was at the, at the conference it was when, uh, when you see uh, the outburst part of Sage's mother you'll hear uh, one small group clapping, that was the feminist table. Um, they were looking at pictures of people committing acts of violence and abridging free speech and they were laughing and snickering. Uh, they were ignoring every fact that was presented to them and then they have the audacity to get up and say, why are you bashing feminists? Um, okay, hello, what can I say? Well, as I mentioned earlier, most feminists are not evidence-based. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I know that Janice Fiamengo, Professor Fiamengo, gave an excellent presentation. She talked about something that the University of Ottawa's uh, 
hockey team is going through looks as bad or worse than what the Duke lacrosse team mm -hmm. uh, got, got through a few years ago. Um, I forget what the last presentation was about, but overall it was it was a big success and a lot of people came, including a number of Kennesaw State University students. So, I did speak with the uh, uh, the radio station for the Kennesaw State University and for the, the 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 same young woman that actually wrote an objective piece of journalism on KSUM. Uh, spoke with her more at length, uh, and they were both very open. Uh, asking Jermaine, it's amazing to me that I can go to Kennesaw State University and talk to the media apparatus there and what I got was incisive Jermaine questioning, real questions, sitting back and waiting for answers, making note of my answers, writing things down about what I said, yet I fucking talked to Time Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> what happens between college and and the big leagues? I don't know, uh, but I, I want to tell you that in my in my opinion, the, uh, the 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 greatest majority of the people doing the journalism. I'm not talking about the opinion pieces that were written, but the journalism that's being done at Kennesaw State is better than what you're going to find at the Washington Post or Time Magazine or HuffPo or anywhere else. These young people are asking real questions and trying to find answers, not trying to see how that they can twist everything into an agenda. And I hope they carry those practices with them into their future jobs as journalists, because this world desperately needs them. I have a prediction there, for whatever it's worth. Despite certain guys who, uh, certain people who become very cynical and very negative, um, I think that there is a generation of young women as well as men looking at the anti-male ideology and looking at all the man bashing popular in the culture and in our in our, our education system and are seeing a problem with it and are actively questioning it so even if we may even have people in the so-called manosphere or certain PUAs or certain MGTO are looking at us and saying why are you letting women in here well A they're half the human race and B I don't believe women have an instinctive aversion for the male half of the species, and I don't believe women lack any empathy for males. There's certain biological differences between the sexes, and, and we can go into all that, but the bottom line is I do think most women do like men and don't view them purely as utilities all the time. I really think that, and I think we're going to see more kids coming out of college uh, from experiences like this, more girls and boys coming out of college calling bullshit. That well, let me let me tell you on that note I was again we were talking a lot about some of the fireworks at the conference and and some of the, the really foobar stuff the fact of the matter is is that I spent most of the people I talked to were like less than half my age they were college students the room was filled with them uh, they were interested they were engaging there were people asking what they could do there were people uh, a young woman said she was uh, contemplating going to Kennesaw State so she could become a part of KSUN and, and uh, was, was actually partially uh, basing her decision on which university to attend so that she could become part of the solution uh, to these problems. That, this was uh, very invigorating, extremely encouraging to me. Most of the room was young people and most of the room, by far the greatest majority, was very friendly to this message, was very warm and receptive to the speakers and engaging. We had a uh, panel discussion at the end uh, that we, we ended up running 10 minutes over. There was an editorial, uh, a uh, document, documentary crew filming there and Sage had to ask them if we could go just a little bit longer but we never ran out of questions and almost every person asking questions was college age uh, maybe a, 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 some a little bit older but these are young people that are waking up to the fact that the paradigm is changing the dialogue is changing and they're interested and this was uh, this had this flavor of Detroit about it of uh, St. Clair Shores uh, the, not only seeing Vladek Filler and uh, Steve Brule and Danny Boy and a lot of people that I know uh, I got to meet Mark Daly for the first time um, this was really great esprit de corps it was a, a great sense of belonging and connection 
and I'm looking forward to many more of these events happening. I want to see them develop into within four or five years having 30 or 40 of these in fall semesters in colleges throughout the United States and Canada. I know that puts the fear of Jesus in the feminists, and it should, uh, because your time uh, of having the floor to yourselves is over. I think so, too. I think this is a landmark historical moment, and I'm going to go ahead and say publicly something that I have only privately expressed to a few people. I like Sage. I've always considered him a friend, and I've poured him. Uh, other than expressing caution, I never was an naysayer toward him. But privately, I had told two or three individuals, I think Kaysom is probably going to be a spectacular failure. Nobody's really going to be interested, and Sage is probably wasting his time. I genuinely believe that for a long time. Um, guess who was wrong? Me. Um, I think not only has Kaysom proven they've got a significant membership now, uh, one that I predict is now going to grow, but the success of this conference is going to shut, set off uh, waves, and I think we are going to see stuff on other universities now, thanks to Sage Gerard. So officially, Sage, I never told you I thought you were going to fail, but now you know I did think you were going to fail, and I'm sorry, brother, because I was wrong. Never underestimate the ginger. No lie. That's we right. will kick your ass every time. Gingers will fuck your shit up, and I promise you. Uh, and I'm gearing up for some fucking of someone's shit up of my own, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, um, uh, the, the, you were right about one thing, Dean. KS, Kaysom went into this conference with 17 members. Uh, they came out of it with 20. Uh, uh, picked up three members just during the course of the conference. What other people should know, as, as Sage mentioned in his video, but in case you haven't seen it, Kaysom is feeding the poor. Kaysom is challenging policy that's discriminatory against men on that campus. Kaysom is out there in that community making a difference. And they have, it started with Sage alone. Uh, we're three days, think, I, I think we're three days short of the first anniversary right now. Um, it started with him alone. Now it's 20 students and growing. And Dean is right, because I tell you what we're going to do. Uh, Sage has offered up $500, so it's ABFM, uh, which is matching it. And we are going to look at doing whatever we can do in the future to start sponsoring scholarships uh, for people. We're not certainly talking about full ride in the beginning, but, but, but partial scholarships for people contingent on them setting up men's issues groups that are on a non-feminist model in colleges and universities. Uh, I, I think that that kind of incentive is needed. We need to help these young people have a reason to get invested in this, and we're going to do that. And as ABFM grows, hopefully, who knows, one day we, w we may be offering full scholarships for this sort of thing, and I'll be happy to do it. I'll be happy to be a part of educating young people, of, of helping with their education, and at the same time, changing the narrative on our universities, because this is, we'll go back to the issues. Jonathan Taylor, when that video comes out, pay attention to what he had to say. It was a brilliant speech, but it was so fact-based. He brought you stuff, indisputable facts, right from the Department of Education, showing you what's going on, uh, with our young boys and, and young men in colleges and universities. And of course, the feminists in the audience were like, yeah, what else? Um, uh, so what? There's no more men in school. Isn't that a good thing? Um, that's the, the vibe that I got from them. Well, guess what? Uh, that vibe is going to have to change because just like um, there was a time when it was socially acceptable to call uh, African Americans uh, uh, something other than that, uh, and where people did it in the open and in public, as people's attitudes changed, you started seeing that kind of crap disappear. And then uh, people eventually, which is quite correct, considered it a sign of ignorance when you hear from that, that from somebody. And you like, I haven't heard anybody say it forever because nobody I associate with would. The same thing's going to happen with misandry. I promise you, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take work. Uh, but now that young people are being engaged in this struggle, 
feminism. You better change your ways because your shit is done. So apparently Dr. T's dog wants to say something. Oh. She was barking and then she didn't wouldn't stop until she came up. Uh, <laughs> I had to mute my mic. <laughs> to me. Well, it's enough. You, you draw, your, draw, your dog has ginger tinge too, so I guess we should be very yes, afraid. That dog definitely looks part ginger to me. Uh, uh, so I'm not messing with it. So yeah, the video of that, I know DVDs will be on sale, but the video of it will also be available online. All the presentations were very good. Um, yes, there was more there than bashing feminism, although there was a good bit of taking institutional feminism to task. And I think people heard that message loud and clear. Um, I get some flack sometimes in men's rights circles because I say, I know there are nice people out there calling themselves feminists, uh, but they're given cover to something evil. And it's time that you either own that or realize that you're enabling a hate movement. Um, and I think we may be seeing the tide begin to turn there. Now, mind you, tide beginning to turn takes time takes time. It's not like, uh, oh, we just had this conference in Kennesaw State University and peace and love between the sexes breaks out around the world. <laughs> by, by, by Christmas, it'll all be over, folks. No, no, that's, that's not how this shit works. But Yes, by next year, we'll be able to say misandry don't reel and mean it. Um, that's right. <laughs> actually, I like the way Zed characterized this years ago for me is that you know, social change is not a speedboat. It's like a great, big, huge, lumbering ship that, you know, you turn the wheels to change direction, or like an airliner. It just doesn't turn on a dime. It moves slowly and gravitates toward a different direction. And we're only seeing the beginning of that now. But you know what? We're seeing more than I expected to see in my lifetime already. Uh, so, hey, this is a good thing. Or as Terrence Pop would say, <laughs> uh, I want to mention something else too because I've noticed something else that changed in the dialogue at least in what I get um, you know what's the old all the, all the cliches about what men's human rights activists are you don't do okay basement dwelling neck bearded misogynists um, well I do have the neck beard so um, hate women violent all those things, you know, false, false, false. Uh, the one they're turning to more and more lately, we even had one guy who come up and question us, um, and I will say, not particularly obviously skeptical. I sense that he views himself as genderqueer just because of the way he's dressed and some, somewhat of his affect, which is also fine in his own business. But he asked, like, what are you doing to address these problems? And I'm hearing that question a lot. What have you actually done? You guys don't actually do anything. And I don't think he got enough of an answer, although the grand irony is that he would ask that at a KSUM event, not already knowing that KSUM is doing very specific things to challenge and chain policy on the campus, doing things like uh, food drives for the homeless. Here I am sitting in a hangout with somebody, um, whoever that is over that, that, that strange ginger person with the dog over there who has a full-time practice uh, coaching and counseling men who are in abusive relationships, but she doesn't do anything either, I guess. Um, we made that effort to start a men's shelter that got, well, it went badly because we got stolen from, but we've given support to all kinds of groups that are at trying to enact social and legislative change and raise money and help get innocent men out of jail. We do do things, and I'm getting tired of hearing that one too. You know, I'm honestly uh, not tired of hearing it. Uh, I I love why we're doing things to hear people say, "Why aren't you doing things?" Because I love visible proof of mental handicaps. Um, <laughs> it's like they were sitting there, uh, this individual who kept coming up. I mean, and I felt cheated because this person did not come into the Q&A for me. Came into the Q&A and asked every speaker the same question. When are you going to quit bitching about feminism and start doing something? Um, and, and I really wanted to answer that person's question, uh, but unfortunately they didn't come up for me. But I find that rather ironic too. This is something that feminists say all the time. And 
You know, the only thing I can possibly say to respond to that is, that one, it is a stupid question because, one, changing the narrative is doing something. It, 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 it isn't a brick-and-mortar structure, but I can assure you that until you have a different mentality about men and boys, until there's something in our social structure that offers them compassion, recognizes their problems, where it becomes socially unacceptable uh, to bash men and to, to ignore their pain and their problems and their suicide, until that changes, then you don't get the legislation. You don't get the brick-and-mortar structures. You don't get all the stuff in the academic realm uh, that are, is being afforded to women. The first thing that has to change is what's going on up here in a lot of people's minds. And working on that by doing what AVFM does, what, what uh, Dr. T does, uh, what a lot of other groups do is work toward the solution. And it is working. The fact that... Um, we were able to have a conference uh, on men's issues in, in St. Clair Shores and the fact that Sage Gerard was able to put this on in the face of great amounts of hate. Both events were, were absolutely plagued by bigots and haters and they still went on. They still happened. You know, in 29 in Vienna they tried to do this and it got shut down. Um, there was another one in 92, I believe, by a professor out of the uh, University of Missouri-St. Louis, and um, they managed to pull it off, a group of professors, and all of their careers were destroyed afterward, totally out the window with and all they, of them. Not only were their careers destroyed, but they faced total media blackout. Yep. Um, so it's changing. Uh, it, it is changing, but it's just a slow process. It's It's like expecting like why haven't you done more is like going back to the antebellum south and saying why haven't you acquired voting rights for blacks well we had to get them out of chains first um, uh, there is a process involved here and to get them out of chains we had to convince people that they didn't need it they weren't supposed to be in chains uh, because people really believed they even had quotes out of scripture and justified slavery with religion and it took a long time for the world to start waking up to just how brutal and wrong and vicious and terrible that sort of thing is. And we're in the same process now with men. So give it a rest, folks. You want to tell us, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? Well, look what happens when we try to even talk. And then, then ask me again why we haven't done things. That's an absolutely asinine question. I want to say, too, that Aside from putting in the fact that um, many of us put in 30, 40 more hours a week, unpaid or paid only pennies to do what we do to educate the public, which is real work, especially in the face of bigotry and hostility. I'll tell you one of the reasons I personally joined this struggle publicly on A Voice for Men, because I'd had the experience of working with legislative groups and working, uh, you know, legislative reform groups and working with things like, I, I used to do some work for Jan Brown at the Domestic Abuse Hotline for Men and Women and watched her year after year after year apply for grants and assistance and funding just to run this, the only non-sexist domestic abuse helpline in the entire United States, get shot down by the feminist establishment time after time after time again. Watch Save Services there in Washington, D.C., who I volunteered with for a while. Try time and time and time and again to get substance of equality into the law, only to see tiny slivers of almost insignificant improvement. I've seen there's been groups like the National Coalition for Men doing great work since the 70s, uh, filing legal cases and stuff like that, yet because the culture hasn't been ready, these people get shot down. Earl Silverman, for God's sake, for 20 years trying to tried to run the only men's shelter in all of Canada and was shit on by his own government and shit on by the feminist establishment for even doing it, eventually kills himself. Don't tell me that people haven't been trying to do stuff and that we're only complaining. The people have been trying to do stuff have faced a brick wall and they faced it in the face. Of, they've done they hit a brick wall because of a public and a government and an empirical uh, a system what, do you, what Aaron Pitsy calls an evil empire that doesn't want to acknowledge these issues exist, which is why we're here to educate people on those issues. There, I'm done with pontificating for now. Sounds right to me. Um, well, let's see. How's our time doing, Dino? 
Uh, we're at 40 uh, minutes, and I wanted to just point, I guess while we're on this topic, I mean, Tara, you've mentioned this before, but I want to put you on the spot again. You, you went to all the way through school, uh, getting your degree in psychology, all the way up to the doctorate level. When did you finally figure out there was something wrong with how, what you were being taught about men? Well, first of all, male domestic violence victims were not discussed. It, well, to the extent of sometimes women will murder their husbands or burn them alive in their beds at night when they're asleep, but it's an act of self-defense because they're the real victims. And right, and that, about, I, remember, I remember you telling me at some point it just started to click with you that there was something wrong with that, that you were being well, there, taught... There, there, yeah, well, when I was in, when I started doing my clinical practica and internships, that's not what was walking into my office. Uh huh. Uh huh. So let exactly. me see if I get this right, Doctor T. You're saying there's a disconnect from what they were teaching in school and the actual reality on the ground. Why? Yes, there was. <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure that was clear. Yes, and it's up. Very much, very, very much so. In fact. That's why shrinkformen.com exists, in fact. And, um, now, why it doubled in traffic every month for the first how many months, Dr. T? Uh, for about, I think, almost the first 18 months. And my traffic is, sorry, a hair that's tickling me. It's making me a little crazy. Um, Gingers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, my, my traffic, I, actually, I stopped checking my traffic. Um, I just do what I do, and I get, I get, client queries and I'm just about at maximum capacity. And you got a bustling forum that people use constantly to give self help to well, what do you call it's, it? Peer, peer, support. Peer, peer support to each other, yeah. And that's bustling and very busy too. And I'm and I'm about to I had some stuff come up in October. I had hoped to get uh, crazybusters.com launched, but I'm going to be turning my attention to that now in the next uh, two weeks. So I hope to have that ready to go by mid November, at which point I'm going to take a week off and travel with my partner to somewhere warm and exotic. Um, and uh, and uh, but that's going to be a site to help women who are the partners of men who have an abusive crazy ex who's still causing problems and it will have a, a blog and a forum as well. Can I make one suggestion, Dr. T, when you and your partner are vacationing in some place warm and exotic, if somebody right. says something on the internet that bothers you, don't pull a Jessica Valenti and leave the beach to write furious Twitter post about it. Just let it go. Uh, I, I don't plan on looking at my, my internet or my email much while I'm gone, but thank you for that. You're welcome. That's free advice, by the way. I won't, won't, won't be sending an invoice for that. Thank you. There you go. Okay, so who's got some? We, we might as well close this up. Next week we'll probably return to our normal format of actually having some a specific list of stories to talk about. Uh, did you have any closing thoughts that you wanted to mention, Paul? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Once again, just want to tip my hat to Sage Girard, the academic, uh, uh, the collegiate activism director for Voice for Men. I am very proud to say and um, hoping for a much more expanded uh, bit of his work in the future because I think this needs to be repeated about two or three hundred times across Canadian and United States universities uh, to the point that uh, uh, they simply cannot ignore it anymore and I think that's eventually going to happen. I also want to give a little foreshadow uh, that tomorrow, um, I am. this is totally off topic now, Quite a bit of controversy lately uh, with uh, some elements of the MGTOW community. Uh, again, we've got MGTOW as a philosophy, which uh, I think is a, one of the most remarkable, wonderful things uh, that has happened to men in a long time. And we have a lot of great thinkers uh, out there that are going by that label, if you will. Uh, there's also a fringe element on the ends that are absolute raving fucking lunatics that inhabit forums and uh, sit around with, and have circle jerks about how terrible women are, and that's basically what they do. Uh, so we've heard from part of that crowd and a few others recently about a video I did 
Uh, Sandman has come out with a video. I have not seen it yet. I'll probably watch it later tonight, but I understand that he's pretty much informed me that I'm not supposed to speak about MIG MGTOW. And, of course, what's the best way to get me to speak about MGTOW? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will be doing within uh, – I'll try to do it tomorrow. Within a couple of days, though, I will get a response out to, to Sandman um, and to address more of this. Um, ABFM addresses the issues of men and boys in modern culture. Uh, MGTOW is associated. It's, it's a relevant topic for men and boys in modern culture. Uh, so nobody around here is going to shut up about anything. We're going to offer our opinions, and uh, we're going to listen to the opinions of people that express them and those that come out raging and screaming and sounding like fucking social justice warriors will be happily dismissed uh, very quickly. Um, SJ, uh, SJWs are just like, they're shitty whether they call themselves feminist or, or MGTOW, and we do have an element of the MGTOW community very much on the extremes. It's a very small part of it, but boy, they're very vocal, and they're being vocal right now, and I've got a couple of things to say about that, which I'll be doing tomorrow or the next day. And some of it's in Peter Wright's excellent book, Men Going Their Own Way, which should be available for publication soon. This seems to have set people off, although strangely, they keep acting like you wrote that book, Paul. I well, I, I did assist in the writing of the book. It is uh, by Peter Wright. It is with uh, some... Uh, work on my part. There's a couple of original pieces from me. There's some observations from me in there. It is mostly Peter's book, but I think every word of it, I think the guy's brilliant myself. It was a pleasure working with him, and I'm looking forward to, uh, we're going through the process now. It's a learning experience to do publishing, um, and I jumped the gun on it a little bit, let it out leak for a little while, uh, and then we had to pull back and say, no, this thing is not quite ready for prime time. So as soon as that's done, it'll be re-released, and uh, people will get to read it. And yes, it will say things that I think many MGTOWs agree with, and I think it'll say things that some MGTOWs will disagree with. But what it will say is our honest opinion, unabridged and expressed in a land of free speech. And Peter Wright has been a man going his own way for, I think at this point, about 12 years. So some of you younger guys might want to listen up. He was MIG Tell before Yeah, what you. the fuck does he know? <laughs> he's, only, uh, he's also the founder of, uh, and, and publisher of gynocentrism.com and a pretty much a, a, in, the re in this realm a noted scholar. But, you know, what the heck. Uh, he, he, he may not agree with Sandman, so what can he possibly know? What, uh, what I will say is that... Uh, I hope something productive comes out of this because one thing I love about the men's movement and its various permutations and one thing we long tried to avoid on ABFM is fratricide um, and just letting people disagree and agree to disagree and move on and I hope that um, that's what eventually comes out of this little disagreement. I can guarantee you that's what's going to come out of this disagreement. We're going to continue on with the advocacy that we do. We're going to continue doing what A Voice for Men does, and we're going to move on. There isn't any – the only people that can stop that is us. So uh, that's, that's our right. – That's right. And indulging in constant infighting isn't good for anybody. We just say we don't agree, and we keep going. So anyway, yep. um, so we have that, and now uh, in general um, – Okay, some conference or anything else. Final thoughts, Dr. Tara. Uh, Sage, from what I've seen, um, you did a fantastic job. Hats off. I can't wait to see the rest of the videos. Um, I thought you handled the incident with your mother. You were just wow. Great job. Um, and another announcement. Paul and I will be finally doing a new Going Mental episode this Wednesday at 4 Eastern. I believe we agreed on the topic of men enforcing boundaries with their mothers, is that right? <laughs> Indeed we did. <laughs> Topical. How did that happen? Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. And by the way... Oh my way, God, we're going to hell every last well, one of us. Well, if you can't exercise boundaries with mommy, you're probably <laughs> not going to be exercise boundaries in your intimate relationships, in your professional relationships, in any kind of relationships with with women who have poor boundaries or who are straight up predatory cunt bags. Straight from the doctor's mouth, folks. 
There you go. Well, well I'm going to look forward. Hmm? You did. You did. <laughs> I'm going to look forward to watching that episode. I think I think it should be very telling, uh, very educational. Uh, and by the way, Sage's mom, so everybody knows, unlike a lot of feminists, had the maturity to be proud of her son. And Although she actually, did take credit for it. Well, true. <laughs> and I bet that had something to do with Sage, too. But yeah. still, she also made up and made friends with Paul. And so any of you out there tempted to try and may use this woman as your totem don't try it. She won't appreciate it very much. And I would expect that. Uh, and for the record, I have no problems with Sage's mother. She's just fine with me. There you go. So anyways, if you're in an abusive relationship with a woman or think you might be, please seek the services of Dr. Tara Palmatier at shrinkformen.com. That's shrink with the number four in the middle, men.com, where you will find excellent articles, uh, a very excellent peer review system, uh, peer Sorry, peer support system in uh, an excellent set of forums and the ability to contract the one on one counseling coaching services of Dr. Tara Palmadier herself. Please go check that out. If you want to learn more about men's issues in general and a broader scope of things, please see us on the front page of a voice for men.com. See you all next week. Oh, and one let me add one thing here. Sorry, folks, let me add something here. If you want the truth about domestic violence and who it affects, uh, and the research on it, and you hear interviews with the real experts and the, the pioneers in this field, the science of, about domestic violence and what's happening, come to whiteribbon.org, and That's you will right. find the actual story there. That's whiteribbon.org, or you can also find it under whiteribboncampaign.org. It's a great new website sponsored by ABFM, where you get the straight deal on domestic violence instead of the lies. All right, and everybody, please remember to hit like and subscribe. See you next week. Bye-bye.